Welcome one, welcome all, I am Bridger, and this is Axis Empires, The Road to War. Now, war has already broken out in the Pacific a while ago, so I guess that road is very short, but the road in Europe is long and winding. The Axis are taking a big gamble this turn on Switzerland. They ideally could have played it sooner. Nope, couldn't have done it, actually. Not, not, not possible, not legal. So this is where all of their planning and scheming comes down to a very simple role. Let's open up and reveal Demand Switzerland. They are going to first get uh, this into the delay box. They get that mountain army. Then they get two steps. Let's put those on the board real quick. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. At this point, we find out if it's possible for them to make it happen. But first, the Tirpitz. Nope, a one was needed for the naval build. Now we're going to roll on demand Switzerland. They need a six. They got a three. That brings us to the international crisis table, which could still work in Germany's favor. That's one of the reasons this was an okay plan, but it has to work this turn. Five to a four, gradual decline. That means they are going to put the seated lands marker a number of tur seasonal turns ahead. If it happens in the next two, actually, anytime 39, that should work in their favor. Let's see if it works. Uh, do, the friend, do, do, the, do the allies want to contest this? I think they will. The allies will contest this. They would love to see a military defeat, and there's actually a 33% chance of that happening. So they're going to force the roll to happen again on the international crisis table. It's another five. I think Germany is perfectly happy with this. Beautiful. They're going to take it. Now we got to see technically what happens is Switzerland joins the West. And so we move this in here. Then we have to set their forts up. The res unit goes in here. The rest of these go on the board. However, the German seated to Germany marker is going to go on the turn track. So Switzerland comes with these two forts, and then they get a mobilization roll, and it means everybody gets to mobilize. So they are as strong there, if not stronger, than the Maginot Line forts, um, albeit they need four steps to make it happen. But that's arguably very difficult to crack. And yet, uh, now we have to determine how many turns ahead the seated lands marker goes here. So we have to apply influence to one minor country sharing a border with the resisting neutral minor country. Axis has to do this. This is great, actually. The, this is like the Munich conference, but for Switzerland instead of Czechoslovakia. And the Axis is going to kick that neutrality marker out of Italy. That works very much in their favor. And then next, we must roll a die and place a seated land marker that many seasonal turns ahead. So we roll the die and it comes up four. So one, two, three, four. So as long as pre-war is still in effect in autumn of 1939, which it should be, uh, then when this marker, this is activated as a minor country, oh, do not perform a mobilization roll, do not end its policy. So technically these should be on their one step sides. There we go. Slightly easier to crack. But then if we go to the seated land marker here, it says if the seated land marker is removed from the turn track during pre-war, we place it in the seated land box. If it's Austria, Czechoslovakia, or Switzerland, then we basically delete all the counters and intern any allied units in there. So they're going to get exactly what they wanted. And as a bonus, they got Italy to be not neutral anymore. Um, that could not have worked out better for Germany. And the allies wound up wasting their luck marker. Germany didn't even have to spend theirs. Wow. Okay. Um a uh, bold plan, Cotton, and it worked out. So I think that's going to be it for Germany. They don't have anything else to do on their turn. So let's head over to Japan, who has, oh boy, a very difficult situation. They have accidentally triggered Axis Tide. They didn't mean to, but they kind of did. Um, because, where, what do they have here? They have Chongqing. They've taken Hong Kong. And they've got Wuhan. And the Allies, even though the Allies technically have Batavia, it's not counting against the Axis because Batavia is a Western miner, which is currently 
under the quarantine posture. So it's a policy affected country. So the allies having control over that strategic hex does not matter. That means the Axis have to be really worried about a Russian uh, ultimatum happening in the winter. So they have to play Russian neutrality pact like right now to make sure that that's preempted. Now, that does give them three steps. That's good. But it also is going to mean that the Kwangtung army is now going to have to be redeployed on the border, specifically in these hexes that border uh, their rail or road hexes that border uh, Russia or a Russian, a Soviet country. So they're going to need to build up a bunch of steps over here and occupy those border hexes. And yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem for this foreseeable future. We can't attack Hopei under that circumstance, right? We can't attack Hopei with the, with the Kwangtung uh, army backing us up. And we're not exactly deployed in a position to attack Hopei. So my hope is that we can get Hopei diplomatically. The other thing we'd like to do is probably use minor country created on Korea. That will free up some extra um, steps for us. And that will come from the political expansion. That gives us a free minor country created on any dependent or conquered allied minor. And then this is where treaty comes in handy. We're going to use treaty multiple times on Hopei. Uh, in the hopes of getting it on our side. We'll see how all that works. Meanwhile, we have to set up an attack on Singapore as best we can. I was trying to figure out if there was a way that we could use a, um, a marker here and just walk across. The problem is the timing. So in the Pacific, the South Monsoon season lasts until spring. And they're definitely going to bring in reinforcements before then. There's no way I can stop them. So I think it's going to be too hard to land there directly. I might want to set up to land over here and then walk up so we don't have the extra beachhead shift against us. What I can do is put a headquarters right here that can assist the attack into there. And I think that's going to be our best bet. We might be able to set that up by spring. In the meantime, we have this marker. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I take that back. Next turn, we will be able to use this. I had the south and north monsoons mixed up. Next turn, this is going to be clear. So we'll be able to use our service fleet to try to land at Kotabaru. And if we can do that, then we can capture that port and just start shipping steps south. Meanwhile, we're going to continue to raid their air force in an attempt to beat it down. Their navy's gone because they don't want us to take pot shots at it, which you can't really blame them for. So now we're going to follow the sequence for Japan and see how things play out. Option card segment, they are revealing economic expansion which I love to have, but you hate to play it because it gives you zero steps. It does give you a couple of detachments, uh, which are going to be valuable. It means we're going to have to undo some of our detachments that are out there right now and get some detachments back on the board for ourselves to be used in the second turn here because we do probably want those detachments moved somewhere else that's hard to get to. Actually, do we have that many? Maybe, maybe over here? Because we're definitely going to want to defend the Marshall and Gilbert Islands at some point, I imagine. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, let's go ahead and take our... There we go. War production marker. We're going to send it into the delay box. And from that point forward, all of our delay rolls will be minus one, which can make a significant difference uh, some of the time. All right. That having been said, we're now in the support segment. And in this segment, we have our... Uh, I boat has returned to our force pool. So we're going to uh, go ahead and use that right here. And we're going to try to attack the British fleet based in Bangladesh. Actually, probably base it in Ceylon. That's slightly safer. It's probably the naval base where they actually did put a lot of their stuff. Um, so that's where it's actually based. So we're going to try to attack that using the standard rating rules here. Uh, for a sub patrol, we're going to then roll on this sub patrol table to see if there's anything that we can spot. These are the targets right here. 
And we're going to roll and see what we get. We got a two, which means a carrier with the lowest speed factor has been spotted. So it's one of these light carriers, which is disappointing, but uh, at least we hit something potentially. So here's two rolls to find out if we hit anything. A five is a disable, a six is a hit. Ooh, we got a six. So now we get to roll for damage. Anything above a two, a two or higher will kill it. Yes, we've sunk the Hermes. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. We're going to go ahead and put a little graveyard here below this for the just looking later to see how crazy everything is. But yeah, the Hermes has been sunk. So nice shot by that uh, U boat or I boat in this case. And the I boat now goes to the naval delay box. Always goes to the naval delay box, but it could come back fairly quickly in order to uh, work in our favor. Okay, that was that support. That was that. Now we need to do the air raid. Uh, we still have our heavy air unit here. So we're going to do an air raid against the air units here. We're going to try to hit them when they're on the ground. They might come up to intercept us like we did against them last turn. Let's see what happens popping up the base attack rules. So we're forming the base attack with that one heavy air unit right here with three attack factors. We're gonna roll the dice. On a one or a two, we managed to hit them. A six, the raiders are discovered. Oh, damn, again. This isn't great. Uh, and I guess the allies are gonna defend with their light units because they don't wanna lose their heavies in this combat. They want to keep their light units available um, they want to keep their heavies available to counterattack us on their turn. So let's see. It's a three to a two, and we're going to bring both of these guys to the uh, to the battle board here, and then play it out. It's a day action, non-phasing player attacks first. So we're looking for three attacks. They need a six to hit the enemy. They got the six they needed. Now they have to roll for damage unmodified. They got a five, which is going to fully destroy this uh, LBA from the British. They are going to get it back sometime in the near future. But for now, it's going down. That's pretty good. Now, let's see. These guys get to hit back with two rolls. They're also looking for sixes. They got one. Uh-oh, here comes the damage roll from the British. Wow, another six. They both wiped each other out. That's not great <laughs> for Japan. Um, I don't think they have another heavy, so this is going to be going to the delay box. Both of these are going to the delay box, and that's the end of that chapter. Although, you know what the British had to do, or the Japanese had to do in order to provide that counter-strike? I think they had to get rid of their air force. If I remember the rule correctly, um, Raiders discovered uh, Schiffskrieg here. Raiders discover the phasing faction must select an Air Force Bomber CV support unit in its force pool and place it in the delay box. That's really bad for them. That that can actually backfire on you quite astoundingly because now you have to have your, your unit weakened for a while. So the question is, do they want to get rid of their CV strike or do they want to get rid of their Air Force? Well, since the Air Force that they were using uh, has now disappeared, hmm... I think they're going to paste the CV fleet in the regular. It's the regular delay box, no matter what, not the naval the warfare delay box. We can make better use of the LBAs in this short range engagement here. Um, so that's that. Uh, we're going to have to fly some of these air units south to make up for that disaster that the Japanese just suffered. And now we'll see what comes next. The Allies did just get on a previous turn. They got their Air Force back as well. So that's, oh man, we were really counting on having both of those for this next operation. Well, it is what it is. Let's move on. Uh, that brings us to the end of the support segment, I think. We don't have anything else to place at the moment. Organizations, combinations, things like that. This is where we have to start preparing for our move down here. I'm going to go ahead and combine as I go because I got to think about how this is going to work. We've got those three there. This can go here. 
And then this can come here. That spends this convoy. Did we want to use a scratch convoy for anything here? I think we have to. Otherwise, we are going to be... Oh, we, we didn't place the uh, neutrality pact here. Oh, and we didn't do our um, ship builds. Whoops. Ship builds for Japan. They really need this one. One to a three. They got it. Finally, they have been dying to build another ship for a couple seasons now. Uh, oh, and these actually come off the turn track. So the Furious and the Kent, we're going to put those right over here in the Pacific. Because why not? They don't, they're not needed in Europe at the moment. So now what does Japan decide to build? They haven't built any new carriers. They've been built, they built a couple of battleships. They got lucky very early on, but now they have been unlucky for like three turns in a row. Finally, they're going to get another carrier on the docket. Excellent. Good for them. Now, the plan here is to get a bunch of steps down here and then use our surprise attack card. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do to move this headquarters from here to here. In the meantime, it's threatening up here, and that's kind of what we need it to do. So. These colonial steps, uh, we know that we're not going to need to worry about that partisan base for a little while longer. So the colonial steps can walk onto these detachments and we can get rid of one of them. So send that to force pool so that we'll have it for next turn. During the detachment phase of this turn, we would remove it is what happens. Uh, meanwhile, we got to figure out what to do with these guys. I think we do need to use our Scratch Convoy this turn. Uh, let's use the Scratch Convoy in the Yellow Sea here. One of these units is going to be bust up here during the uh, operational movement phase. This guy is going to go up here. These guys are going to have to start railing their way already. That's all operational movement. Down here, do we want to combine these guys in order to fit more guys? I don't know. I think this guy wants to come down here, actually. And this colonial unit can walk forward. And then in reserve, he's going to walk forward again. But now we're not going to have any attacks here, I don't think. The best attack we could muster would be a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to 5. So two to one, but they would get three shifts and we would only get one. Until we get some air support over here and or larger numbers, this is just going to be a problem. We could shift and attack this guy, actually. Uh, that's a better way of looking at it. We could hit him with, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight to two. And we won't even have any river shifts. Eight to four if he throws in his headquarters. I don't know how that helps us, though. I think we're just going to hold off because an eight to, eight to four is, again, a two to one. It's not great. So no attacks here. I think we're done with operational moves. Now we're going to do uh, non-operational moves. Now we're going to do reserve moves. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, the Colonial here has to stay in Nanking. This guy can move south to free up Changsha to move down one. Meanwhile, this guy is going to move up to this spot in Korea. This guy is going to move up one. All three of these guys are going to move two. But this guy can't move two. He's going to get stuck right there, actually. That leaves us room to drop three new steps, Tung steps here. Because what we're going to need is two steps per rail hex. Two, four six, eight, that we're going to need to garrison. Uh, and we've got, let's see, four, five, six. And so we're going to be, need to drop a couple more steps over here to make all that happen. In fact, if we're doing that, maybe I don't need to bring this up here. Maybe that was actually a mistake. If I'm able to drop in three more steps here, I can use the entire, the Kwangtung army exclusively. So then during reserve, these guys can move where? They can drop down to Fuchao, or do they want to go to Formosa to act as a potential reinforcement down here? I think that's where they want to go. All right. And then that would mean that this uh, is back for reserve. How do we want to handle these convoy moves in reserve? 
this guy's got to go somewhere. Does he also want to go to Formosa? That does give us the most flexibility. He can either walk on here to help with this, or we can send him further south. So maybe sending this guy to Formosa also seems like a good call. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Meanwhile, the troop convoy down here, also available, is going to bring this guy down right here for that reserve movement. So now we've got one of our best top armies down here, a 2-1-1. The other 2-1-1 is over here as a 3-3-1 -1 at the moment. So where do we go next? That's all of our reserve movements, I believe. He's going to hang out there. They've already moved. So yeah, Japan, I believe, is done here. They now just get their conditional events. Where do they want to put their last few detachments? Well, we probably should have one on Iwo Jima. I didn't even notice that we were missing one there. So let's go ahead and put a detachment directly on Iwo Jima. Where's that last one going to go when we play the other part of economic expansion here? Maybe we will put it in... What the heck is that? Einmutok? Just because it's a gray hex? Uh having control of that would be valuable later. Man, it's it's very easy to run out of these. We'll get more detachments later. Uh, specifically with card 20, we get three more detachments. And if we went with naval, actually either naval or army expansion, we would get two more detachments here. But I think yeah, we get no more detachments after that. We are maxed out on detachments. We're using a lot of them in China where we don't want to use them, right? They're best used on ports of important areas. So we're going to have to stop doing this. And the colonial steps and theoretically the Korean steps we get will help us there. But anyway, conditional events uh, for Japan. Oh, this is a seasonal turn. We need to build them one of the Sichuan units. Uh, that is going to be the expeditionary unit. Still can't leave. In fact, he's going to build himself up here because the Chinese may now go to war with them. The communist Chinese. So that's entirely possible. We've got to prepare for that. And that actually happened early. So they can make that into a port of fort And we're actually going to relocate this guy up here. And then over to here. Or do we not want that port of fort there? No, I think we want the port of fort like here. So they were built in Cheng Kong. They go here, and then next turn they can port a fort there. Um, I'm hoping to build one more guy here. Maybe this these guys actually kind of walk up together, so that they can be built up, and then we get an additional step to build later. Excellent. All right. So that is done. We're going over to the west in Europe, and they have played guarantees. It is one one fraction of a turn too late to cause headaches for the Germans. But it's played, so it's finally out there. Franco-Russian Entente is being discarded. And then, if pre-war is in effect and Britain posture is appeasement, change the postures of France, Britain, and Western miners to guarantee. So we're going to take care of that right now. All right, Britain, France, and the Western Miners now have a military alliance. If one of them goes to war, all of them go to war. I forgot to put Germany's card as a pending card. There we go. Now the West has to choose their pending card, and they have to roll their naval buildup. So let's see. Pending card for the West. We had decided it was going to be Maginot Line. Yes, that definitely seems to be the case. Um, they're going to need it. Uh... Now that they have to worry about this hex, the Maginot line better hold all on its own, and we'll have to put something else over here to help hold. Actually, two things, right? We oh no, that's a that's a a, a a lake hex. The Germans can't go across that unless they get a marine, which they can't do unless they play demand Lithuania. So we'll see if they get that or not. But for now, they've got Western guarantees in effect. They've chosen Maginot line, and they're going to stick with it. So France gets a step. And might as well put that one in Paris there. Next, they get to move some stuff. Do they want to move some stuff? Yeah, I think they want to move some stuff. They'll combine those guys, send that back to the force pool. Uh, 
And this guy's going to go one, two, three, four to defend there. Almost certainly going to need more than two steps to defend that adequately. And even then, whew, it's not going to defend it adequately. <laughs> France is in a real hard situation here with Germany getting that Switzerland situation uh, to their advantage. They still have stymied the Germans in a couple of places. Czechoslovakia and Sweden, obviously have posed issues to them, but we'll see how the rest goes. So that's the Western guarantees. The West over here is finally playing Commonwealth mobilization. That has been a long time coming. So let's follow through on these force pool things. All right, oh, forgot naval builds for the allies. Let's see, uh, Britain is one to five. No, they missed. And then the French are one. The Americans are one to three. Uh, yeah, American got it. Okay. Let's see. America, America, do you want a carrier? Yeah, as much as I want to lay down one more battleship. We'll do one more battleship for the Americans, then we're going to do some carriers. They've got lots of carriers to build over the course of the game. All right, now we're back over here. Common with mobilization. They need to now do their choice for the next card. I think it's got to be Gandhi arrested. They just got all of these steps into their force pool, and three of them, two of them are Indian steps they can't build until they get rid of Gandhi arrested. And the Indian steps that are in India are trapped there until they get rid of the, uh, the, the sorry, the quit India marker. You may notice if you are sharp eyed that I have adjusted this card. It really bothers me that Gandhi arrested has three times more steps than anything else that the British can play at this point in time. It does not feel like a penalty at all, and it's supposed to be a penalty. It's just completely thematically weird and broken. In Total War, it is kind of a penalty because there's a lot of cards you really, really want to play in Total War. In Limited War, that's not quite the case, I don't think. And in Limited War, it's really hard for the British to get steps, and they really need the steps, if you haven't noticed. So the fact that it gives them three times as much steps, it's going to quadruple the size of the British army right now. And no other card that they have here can do that. So I have changed it to instead of giving them three steps, this now only gives them one step, and in Total War, it would give them more steps. So it's not quite as bad in Total War, it still gives you the full three steps. And that's the idea behind it. So now they are going to play Gandhi Arrested, though, because they got to get rid of that Quit India marker. Or they're not going to be able to use a lot of their steps. So uh, and, and the one step that they did build, I think, is going to be stuck here until they get rid of it. So that's going to happen in the winter. We got to figure out what they're going to do next. I mean, we, we know that they want to do like the cash and carry thing and then the warning to Japan. Like these all have to happen, right? I'm going to stick these over here and then we're going to decide if that's actually what's going to go there. Um, the other options we have, Commonwealth Rearmament is gone. American Rearmament is on the docket. Churchill Diplomacy and Chang Diplomacy are both available, but probably not something we want to deal with at the moment. Um, Indian Independence is a major, major mistake to be played right now, I think. Uh, let's, let's move the rest of these over a little bit to make it easier to see them all. What else do we have available? I mean. Anything with British steps on it. U.S. victory program is not possible. War plan orange isn't possible. Commonwealth surrender, let's not consider that. But we will consider limited war production for the Commonwealth. We should also consider Commonwealth support, though that one normally goes to Europe. So we are um, kind of messing with that. Now, additional British bases seems like a no-brainer because the Hong Kong fortifications obviously aren't happening. They already lost Hong Kong. Oil embargo is also high on the list here. To get the Americans, like, in the war, that's also a possibility. Cylon fortifications, also consideration with additional British bases. And the Riviera Conference, also very strong consideration. So is Pacific mobilization. So the British kind of have two options. Because Axis Tide has already been achieved, they could try to get the Americans in the war with a U.S. ultimatum in the summer of next year. I think, where's the US ultimatum? American ultimatum, yeah, that's all it takes. And then after that, the Americans can play all kinds of cool stuff. So we're gonna move these down a little bit and put 
oil embargo and kind of think about this. What would happen if we get the Americans in the war right now? Well, let's see what would happen to their builds. United States during limited war, European limited war is the only thing that seems to affect their shipbuilding. And I don't think the U.S. shipbuilding marker goes into the strategic warfare box until total war. Yeah, so the Americans don't get their super awesome uh, buildup until total war goes into effect on one of the maps. So that means that I think there's no difference to the U.S. shipbuilding at the moment. And not until U uh, European limited war, and then they're just going to build so many, so many ships, so many ships that it's just going to be crazy. I have a feeling that the Americans getting involved this early is absolutely just going to destroy the entire game for Japan, and we'll probably just close it and say, "Sorry, no good." Um, and if that's the case, what I really want to do is take American Ultimatum and make it a requirement that says something other than VP marker is Axis tied. That is too easy to get for the Japanese, as we can see, they can get it much earlier and it punishes them for doing well. It punishes them way worse than they otherwise should be punished, in my opinion. The American Ultimatum, I don't know when it should come, maybe Axis Tide 2, but certainly not Axis Tide 1. I, that, that's my opinion. We're going to play it out and see if that is the case or if I'm missing something. Entirely possible. All that means we definitely want to play Gandhi Arrested for now to give the British a fighting chance, and then we'll throw Oil Embargo, American Ultimatum, and then probably Cash and Carry, Warning to Japan, Selective Service. All of that gets us American Armor Units, which are great and useful. Uh, and we're also going to want to consider many of these other options for the summer of the following year, including some American options since they'll be in the war. Um, American Ultimatum, I think, since I'm right in one small change I was thinking about is if a successful ultimatum was a United States ultimatum, instead of just sending them straight to war, it would put a reassess policy marker in there instead. Give another, I don't know, five or six turns that the Americans are not directly in the war, but then, I don't know, seems, seems like uh, that might be a nice sort of middle ground between America just getting instantly to war as soon as Axis Tide 1 happens and not. Okay, so they've got their next card. Do they build their British one step? No, they haven't. What do they have available now? They've got the New Zealand step and another Australian step. I think they want to build another Australian step here because they can't build the Indian step and these one steppers here need to be used as uh, detachments. They'll have some more detachments. Wait a minute. Oh no, we only got colonials. We didn't get detachments from this. Uh, although we did get a surface fleet and a convoy that went on the delay box. So that will theoretically help the British pretty soon. They are racing to try to defend Singapore before the Japanese can take it. And I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. They're going to certainly try. So I think that's the end of Commonwealth mobilization because they can't move anything. Oh, they're going to definitely use their air forces. And I forgot, Japan wanted to move their air forces down here as well. So probably they put them in different locations to make sure they can't both be attacked, although they wouldn't both be attacked. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, Japan's going to move their air force down there to help defend. And so the British are going to try to shoot at it um, and, and knock it out because they don't have, well, aren't they going to try to shoot at the ships? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the British shoot at the ships. Although we moved the fleet out, didn't we? Yeah, we moved the Axis fleet back away from here so the British couldn't shoot at the ships. Now the fleet is back at Formosa. That's right. Okay, that's all well and good. So the British are going to try to, to attack this air unit, and we go to the uh, base attack here, and we roll. They're going for another six. Wow, the interceptors are really good in this game. That's three base attacks in a row, I think, that have been... Uh, successfully intercepted by the other faction. And what that means is the, the penalty here for the, for the allies is they need to spend their for, they need to spend their air force unit. It has to go to the delay box um, in order to deal with this. 
and then they do get to fight it out. So the attack is coming from here. So we get two attacks by the British. Nothing. And then the uh, Japanese are firing back. Need sixes. One, two, and no, nothing. So they both just kind of do minor damage to each other, and it's not enough to be represented at this scale. And that's the end of that interaction. Uh, but that air unit uh, for the British being sent away, that's real problematic. <laughs> they keep rolling a six. It may have been a bad gamble for them, but it seemed like a, a they were they were desperate, and now they lost one of their air units just when the Japanese had lost one of theirs as well. Okay, that that's a thing that's happened. Now total war is not in effect. They can select one porter city and a hex in a British dependent and place a British detachment there. They need to do this. They need to place these British detachments. Now they're going to place one on Christmas Island, which is a British dependent. Now this counts as an open port, so they're allowed to transfer units to here. And then when the next one we'll put is in Darwin, which will let them, or maybe Perth. Um, Darwin's a little dangerous because if they want to go through the Arfura Sea, then they might have a problem. Although that gets them straight into Port Moresby. That's really where they're going to go next. Next uh, next turn, they're going to be able to place another one. They're going to put one in Darwin. That will allow them to eventually ship units over to Port Moresby from the Indian area if they need to. But they're also trying to use these New Zealanders. So um, putting one directly in Port Moresby will help Australia and New Zealand go directly over there as well. So the dream that the Axis had of landing in Rabul or Ley early with no op opposition has been foiled by the bad weather and the fact that their one and only surface fleet came back uh, like a turn too late to, to make that drop that we wanted to make um, over there. Next turn, this will all be mud and we won't be able to land there anymore. All right, so that should be the end of the British... Uh, over here, the British Americans over here. Sorry, I forgot to change to the to the green color. Um, I wonder, do the British want to move their fleet back over now? Probably not. I think they're still happy with it being up here, so it's not in super danger. All right, so let's go over to the Soviets now in Europe. They have demand. This is a bit of a risk for the Soviets. They might lose some steps here if they fail, but. The main thing is they wanted to get that headquarters. Remember, the, 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 these, the Soviets on this map uh, are basically operating under the idea of we want all the headquarters and all of them forever. So this is going into the delay box. Maximize all the headquarters. And then the Russians get three steps. So they are going to pull out all the steps. One, two, and maybe put one up here. Uh, or do we want to put another one of those down here? Probably have the other very mobile unit down in the open terrain where it's needed, I think. Although the rivers up here do make it valuable to have that extra movement, but we'll put the other mobile unit down there. Okay, so they've got their three steps. Now they're going to do their shipbuilding. They need a one. They didn't get it, unsurprisingly. Now the political events segment. If Russia's posture is Entente or Rapallo, check. And base Baltic States belongs to a neutral country, check. That country, select that country and roll a die. So we're still at a minus one on the political DRM over here. And it's a four, which means ceded land. Uh, see important bullet of 19.3. So I think it was just referring to this note that you don't get any influence in the Baltic states from a normal, like, like with a normal thing. Um, so yeah, Baltic states ceases to exist. And the Soviets now have the Baltic states ceded to them. We're going to go ahead and copy that. All right, so now we've got the extra ceded lands marker here. Did I do that for all of them? Syria, Baltic states, Denmark I've done. Yes, perfect. Okay. Allies over here. Well, let's do this. Give the Germans some breathing room at the bottom there. Okay, so... Success for the Russians, that's kind of exactly what they'd hoped turned out, uh, and they don't really have much else to do except maybe combine these units and like move them towards the front. So let's have these guys move down here and these guys move to here. So now we have a slightly better front. Now we're going to need to build some more units up here. This unit can actually walk forward and place itself in Riga if that's what we want. Re actually, we'll put it right next to Riga. Future reinforcements can now land right into Riga, uh, which would be pretty valuable for us in the future. For now, though, 
Baltic States has done its job. And the Soviets have to pick their next card. They have that chosen, which is Forces for the Far East. Although, they're not going to play that now, I just realized. Um, they had that planned uh, uh, before they learned that the British war... Uh, being under attack by the Japanese. Now they know the Japanese are definitely going to play the neutrality card on Russia, so they don't have to send any forces to the Far East. So they can move up their timeline on something else, maybe pre-war production. They can't support Republicans, but what else can they do? You know, I guess it's time for Molotov diplomacy. I mean, they could also do pre-war production. An extra two steps never hurt nobody. I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to do extra steps. Diplomacy has worked in the past, but Molotov has only, let's see... A one, two in six chance of actually doing anything at this particular juncture. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. Three in six. I'm going to take the, the, the guaranteed steps. I just, I just want to make sure. Building a lot of headquarters requires a lot of steps, okay? We just need the steps. All right, so that's great. So that means that they're going to go ahead and put that as their pending card. And now we're going over to the other, other white Russia. Um, and they already know they're going to do their Russian rearmament as their pending card, but let's pull this up here. Uh, in here, they've revealed aid to China. And they're going to put Russian rearmament here because, oh, wow, they actually have to play this here. Or else, that's one disadvantage of not playing this sooner. I did not realize that. If they don't play this now, they won't be able to play continuing rearmament and Russian mobilization in time. But we know they're not going to play. I mean, Russia has to assume that the Japanese are going to play the neutrality pact on them, right? Right? Do the Russians now even bother playing the rearmament cards at that point? I think they'd rather play Chinese ultimatum immediately. That's what they're going to do. They're going to try to make that happen because uh, they're expecting the neutrality. They're not going to be bothering with Russian ultimatum. That's coming. There's nothing they can do to stop that. The Japanese are not going to risk not playing neutrality pack with Russia next turn. They can't possibly risk it. It's way, way too big a risk. So the Russians are going to play Chinese ultimatum. Make that their pending card. All right. Oh, you know what? Uh, aid to China. Did we do pack with China? Is that what I was just... Uh... Yeah, we just literally just played that, if I recall. Yeah, we just played it. So uh, that is good to go. So aid to China. Communist China's posture is war or nationalist China's is war. That's true. And then Russia's posture is not neutrality. That's also true. So we just barely got this under the wire before neutrality hit us. So we get to add the uh, first, if Russia is not a pack, that's not true. So we skip over that. Soviet aid to China. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is card number 26. There we go. We put that in the delay box. And then they pretty much have nothing to do, except they do get a free step for Kansu because of the plus one Soviet minor production marker down here in the corner. So do they have any units to build of Kansus? Yes, they do. They have a headquarters and a, another choice. Uh, interesting. So now they're going to have to throw that into the delay box uh, in order to build the headquarters, which is too bad. Not much that can be done about that, though. I believe there's more stuff coming out in the near future. Uh, so maybe they can do something about that. Yeah, actually, if they just wait till next turn, they don't have to do that. They can just wait till next turn. Instead, this expeditionary force is just going to move down here to hold the road in the case that Sichuan ever joins the, the fight because free passage, we need a neutrals pressure toward an influence action. Actually, we need an influence action. We have an influence action. We have a bunch of them coming up. Huh. Yeah, lucky for us, the treaty card for Japan has an influence result on five and six, which is different than what you get on German. On Germany, the five to six is 
country joins axis. In this one, it's actually influence. So we can use the treaty to get rid of this free passage marker on Sichuan when it comes around. I think that's going to be a useful option. We're going to try to use it on Hopei as well, because we have another treaty that we're going to play. We're going to play this in the summer, and then maybe we'll play the other treaty in the in the winter, or in the next summer, if we have the opportunity. We could also just play the other one in the fall, if we know we only need like one more. Like if all three of these hit, we're, go we're golden, but we'll see. We'll see. So meanwhile, we're still playing uh, with Russia over here. They've moved these things around. This one's getting ready to build the headquarters for next turn. This one can turn into a fort. These ones are in good position to defend the other city that's up here, Yunnan. So I think we're done with the, uh, with the Russians here. They're planned as best as they can get. So let's move to the delay box and take care of that right now. There's a lot of stuff in the delay box. Let's start with Germany's here is a five. One, two, three, four, five is April, May, spring. The Allied luck marker is a two, very good for them. And then the Soviet headquarters is a three. All right, Europe's taken care of. Now we've got these ones here. Let's do the naval warfare delay box. Can't be a six or they're in big trouble. A four, okay. One, two, three, four. So the the Japanese get another shot at an enemy care, uh, ship with their sub next spring. Meanwhile, this is the big one, war production marker. They're really hoping to get it in a one or a two. Oh, a five. One, two, three, four, five. At least they get it before summer. But that was kind of guaranteed. Here comes the CV fleet, also very important. That's better. That's better for them. A little too late to do anything, but it is better. Wow, and the good air unit comes back only in one turn. Allies, air unit in three. The air force, though, comes back immediately. Ooh, that's very valuable for them. Um, speaking of which, where did the... Oh, that's right. They did a CV fleet that went further down. Uh, and then the... This is very, very important for the allies. A five. One, two, three, four, five over here. Does anybody have a luck marker? The Axis don't want to mess with that, obviously. They're happy with that. But if the CV fleet, if the surface fleet had come back here, the Axis absolutely would have spent their luck marker to try to change that. So troop convoy, three. One, two, three. The Allies aren't moving anything around for a while. And aid to China, also uh, three. The other aid to China is coming here. Where is it hiding? Did it already come out? It did. That's right. Um, not sure that we, yeah, we did. We gave them the aid to China. Did we not? No, sorry, communist Chinese. I think, or, or nationalist Chinese. I think we forgot to give them any steps at all. Um, so this turn, I think what we wanted to have happen is have this guy flip and this guy go to the force pool. Um, and then that wouldn't have allowed us to place a reinforcement uh, at the beginning of the turn with the regular um, allied minor production. That is going to have to be something else. Where would that go? Uh, what do they have available? They could build the... Ne yeah, that's the only real option. They could build the, uh, the Netherlands unit to defend Batavia. And then they can roll for Chinese aid, and if they get lucky, then they can drop one right in here. Let's see if they do. Nope, they needed a one or two, they failed. But they still have a pretty strong position here. It's still five, although they lost their port of fort um, They still have two shifts in their favor, and the Japanese air unit is gone for a little while. So they're hoping that that works out in their favor. All right, coming back to the delay box. Um, where did... Uh, hello? Where'd it go? Oh, I put it in here. It's supposed to go to the delay box. There we go. Delay box it is, and now they get to roll for that, and it's a five. Wow, one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be a little while, but they did get to build an extra Chinese uh, Kiangsu step, so that was kind of in their favor there. They're trying to hold this one city so that they can keep building blue units. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work in their favor forever, but they're definitely going to try. Next up, uh, we are done with delay rolls there. We got delay rolls on the shipbuilding track. The CV fleet is 9 plus 2, that's 11, and this is, in fact, autumn, so we're going to look at uh, 4, 8, 12, so here is where the Shokaku arrives, 
in summer of 1941. And the Washington is 11 plus two. So that goes to here, a 13. All right, uh, that's pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so I think we're ready for the next turn, which is a pretty big one for Japan. We'll see if it works the way we expect, starting though with Germany. They don't have to demand Switzerland anymore. They don't get any steps, so we're just gonna skip over them and go straight to Japan. So let's change the weather, make this look correct. This is September, October, and both for both sides. So now we see, now we see. The allies have no support units, um, except for scratch defense fleet, which they're probably going to use this time because they actually have a decent sized force and they're willing to trade with the, with the, um, with the axis. What does the Axis have? They have an Air Force and, oops, we didn't move forward. This Air Force is going to go back to where it came from over here. The Surface Fleet is going over here. These guys are going to the Soviet Force Pool. These guys are going to the Allied Force Pool. So. Let's see if we can do the mechanics of this landing properly with Japan. Japan doesn't have anything on here to deal with. So they are going to go straight into the support segment. And in the support segment, they're going to attempt to place a headquarters here. Not a headquarters, Jesus Christ. An air force here. And that is going to be contested, obviously, by the air force from the west. And in order to choose that, we have to dictate what uh, units are being sent. I think a 3-5 and a 3-4 make the most sense. So let's pull up the battle board. Here's what Japan is sending to try. Now, if they are able to successfully place this air unit, it makes this not a legal location to count as an air base or a naval base. That's why this is important. That's why the Allies have to contest it. Because if the Axis are successful, then they can simply place a landing here or here, wherever they want, and there's nothing that, they, uh, nothing that can be done about it. So the Allies, unfortunately, they only have that one plane, huh? Or did they get any this turn? And I just, ah, there it is. That's the other plane. The other plane did come back in time. So these two planes are coming up here, but you can see we've got a 3-4 and a 3-4 and then a 3-5 and a 2-5. So slight, slight advantage to the Axis at this time in terms of those air units. Anything can happen. We'll see what that anything is right now. Ooh, we got a scratch, scratch convoy came back. That's good. So here's what that anything is. The Axis fires first. Oh, wait, do they want to do any raids first? Yeah, absolutely. Now that I just thought about this. Before any of this happens, oh, no, 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 no. Because on a six, the raid backfires and the Axis lose their support unit. We'll save the luck marker for, for something else. So we'll just go with a regular old attack here with the air units. Axis fires first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, God, they missed completely. Now the allies fire back with five shots. One, two, three, four, five. They did get a six. So we roll. And it's only a two. Um, now, I didn't actually say what they were targeting. I think that it should have, they should have said that they were targeting. Um, you know what? I need to, I, need, I, I couldn't, I probably would have had them target different things. So I'm going to go ahead and make this random because I should have stated it ahead of time. So odds, it was the heavy, evens, it was the light. Odds, evens, okay, so the, the light takes a damage uh, because it did equal its other side. And now the question is, do the Axis want to withdraw? If they do, they give a minor victory to the Allies, so I think they're not going to withdraw. They're going to stay in. The three is going to target the four, right? So this, this is the situation for the next attack by the Japanese. Here's the three shots. This is the second round of combat. One, two, three. They still can't get a hit. And then these guys are firing one, still can't get a hit. Meanwhile, I think, are the British going to fire back in the same orientation? I think they are. 
Although they'd really like to kill that guy. Tisk tisk. Yeah, they'll just do the same thing. So three against here. One, two, three. They miss. Three against here. They need sixes. One, two, three. All misses from the British. So that is going to be the end of that. These guys all go to the used asset box, if I remember correctly. Um, in this case, I'm actually just going to move them onto the next turn of the turn track so I don't forget. Uh, and then the British are going to go there too. I think. Let me double check. Yes, these all go to the... Um, the used assets box, which honestly, I'm not sure why they don't just tell you to put it on the next turn of the turn track. That seems to be more convenient than putting them in the used assets box. But uh, there might be a subtle thing that I'm missing there. Meanwhile, both of these air units go to the delay box. So now we still do have an air unit nearby that can help do stuff. And maybe now we can't do a base raid, though, this time because we don't have a, an air unit available to make the air raid happen. But we're now going to declare that surface fleet situation. They're going to attempt to place the surface fleet here. And that allow, and then they have to dictate what is constituting that fleet. So first they make a roll plus six to see how many units they're allowed to send. Three. That's pretty good. Uh, now, they can't send more carriers than surface ships. So, they can send nine. That means they could send four carriers and five surface ships. That would be completely legal. One, two, and then probably three. I'm going to send the fastest battleships we've got. Hmm. Maybe sending this light carrier is a mistake. Maybe we send this cruiser instead. Hmm. Because the light carrier might not make it on only a four speed. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So everything has at least a five speed. Pretty dang good chance. So this is the force that constitutes the surface fleet. Now, the allies are definitely going to contest that with their own scratch defense fleet. And the Scratch Defense Fleet has a much smaller size. So let's see if... I think the speed checks are not made until after both fleets have been constituted. Yeah, so task forces are constituted before making speed checks. So the British have to get extra lucky on this roll, and they don't have a luck marker. Here they go! A four. So they can send up to five ships. Is this the moment that the Axis chooses to spend their luck marker in the hopes of making that a smaller number. I think it is. I think they're going to try and hope to get a 3-2 or a 1. Ooh, they got, they got it. They got exactly what they wanted. Now the British are sending in a fleet that composed of only three units. That's because it's a scratch defense fleet. It's not a real fleet marker. So this is the best that they can put together on short notice. So what can they bring? It's got to be fast, whatever it is. Oh, they're all slow. Maybe they just send a bunch of cruisers to die because they know they're not going to survive with only three ships. If they send in the, the carriers, they're just risking them to die. So I think they're sending in some crappy cruisers. In fact, maybe they send slow ships in the hope that they fail. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, this is what they're going to send. So now we have to make speed checks for each faction to see what makes it. So... The carrier Soryu makes it, obviously, as do all of these cruisers. So here's the, the, the Koga. Kaga. All right, they made it. The Raiju made it. The, uh, what the heck? I can't read this. It's too blurry. Horuna fails. Uh-oh. Karishmo makes it, and Congo makes it. Okay, so most of the Japanese fleet made it. Um, the Allied fleet just has two rolls, and they both made it. So let's go to the let's go to the box here. The Allies basically just have to inflict a hit and then get the heck out of there in order to stymie the Japanese. But if they can't get a hit, uh, and the Japanese get a hit, then then good things happen for the Japanese. So let's see now. Um, where's the Japanese units here? These are the guys that are coming on. Bada bing, bada boom. That's a big fleet. These poor cruisers are like, we got sent against this? 
The intelligence was bad. It was bad intelligence. All right, now the allies are going to hope for a night action because the cruisers can't even fire if it's a day action. The Axis are going to hope for a day action. Both factions have an air base within three, so they both get a plus one for that. But the Allies, uh, the uh, Axis, the Japanese are getting another plus one because they are selecting a day action. So here's the two rolls to see whether it's a day or a night action. The Japanese are going first with a plus one, so they got a five, and the British got a one. So it is, in fact, a day action, meaning none of the battleships or cruisers can fire, but they can be fired upon by the carriers. So let's just line this up, um, flip this around so that the best ship goes after the best cruiser. Actually, no. That They, they have a... Uh, let's just do this. Yeah. Although I do want to get the fast cruiser. I want the better chance to get the fast cruiser. Here's the shots in the battle cru on, on the fast cruiser. We get four shots. One, two, three, four. So we got two disable results. And then we get three shots here. One, two, three. That's a hit. We resolve the hit. It's only a one. So they are damaged. And then the Australia gets two shots against it. A hit. And it's sunk. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. The British graveyard of ships is slowly getting bigger, although so far no big ships have been lost. The Japanese have lost zero. So that's going to be a major victory for the uh for, for, for the allies, or sorry, for the Axis there. If every ship in the enemy task force is sunk or disabled, and that is true. Uh, the enemy has, uh, th this is a major victory. So, on a success, the attacker wins the battle, follow the stalemate procedure for the non-phasing faction ships. So, that means that this unit goes to uh, the end of battle. Hold on. All right, naval zone used box for uh, undamaged ships, but there is a damaged ship. What about disabled ships? Disabled ships immediately go to the naval warfare display, naval war del delay box. These markers go to the naval delay box as well, according to this. And then if the attacker wins the battle uh, with a major victory, paste the non-phasing faction support unit in the appropriate delay box. So normally the non-phasing faction support unit with just a limited victory would go to the used asset box, but we are sending it way away, away from here. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, so the result is that the Axis support unit was successfully placed, and this guy is going to the naval delay box because it was a fleet. The surface fleet is successfully placed, so it is going to the reg... Uh, hmm... I think a successful placement means it goes to the regular delay box and not the naval delay box. Ah, just realized I was supposed to place this surface fleet when I did the landing here. I was supposed to place it into the used box, and then on a future turn, it returns to base back into the delay box at that point. So I, I gave myself a little delay reduction there by mistake. But rather than go and undo all of that, we're just going to say that's the way the dice crumbled. Um, and now all of these guys also go into that used box. Uh, and now we are concluded with that combat and we replace the marker there with our beachhead. So the beachhead was successfully placed because it was placed by a fleet. It's on the minus one side. Doesn't really matter because it's not an opposed landing. So. The Japanese are in their support segment still. Do they have anything else to play in the support segment? They have the logistics they can't place just yet. So logistically, we could place that somewhere down here if we really wanted to, but I think we're not going to do that. We might place that in Changsha in order to make a real push into Yunnan in the near future. We'll figure that out. Meanwhile, I think we're past the support segment. Organization segment, do we want to combine? Yes, we'll combine these guys, send a force pool. Um, and actually, maybe we combine with the colonial step. I forgot we can do that, right? So we'll have this guy back off into Shangsha. Both of these guys will back off. We're not making an attack over here right now. Even though they made it a little bit weaker than before, it's still not a good attack for us. 
So we'll move these guys over here next turn, or better yet, we'll move them both in here. Next turn, we can spend, dang it, the Shawa Restoration Marker to allow the Colonial Step to merge with the regular unit and basically wash or launder the Colonial unit into a more valuable and useful form. So that's nice. Meanwhile, let's see, what are we doing with the rest of these movements? Well, these guys can go one, two, one, two. This guy can go one, two, or one, two. And this guy can go to here. And then in reserve, I'm just going to move these reserve guys right now. That can happen. And next turn, we'll dump a bunch of units in here. And one of them can go here, and two of them can go there. And then we'll have satisfied all of our uh, border restrictions when we play the neutrality card. So that should work just fine. Other than that, do we have any other movements on the land? I don't think that we do. Here, do we want to convert? No, we want to do a... Uh, oh, you know, the Scratch Convoy from last turn needs to go into the delay box. Where's that hiding? There it is. That goes to the delay box this turn. That is doing that correctly. We just didn't do Return to Base yet. Uh, and now that we do have one more Scratch Convoy. So where do we want to use these convoys? We definitely want one in the South China Sea. We need one in the Java Sea as well. So the first convoy is going to allow this guy to come over. And the first convoy here is going to allow one of these guys to come down to Sarawak. Yep, that makes the most sense at the moment. And then any other reserve moves? I don't think so. So we now, or any other operational moves. I think we finish all our operational moves. So now we're going to do reserve. The convoy becomes available again. And we get to move over another unit from here. Uh, this guy will move over here in reserve just because. Actually, just cause. They'll all be there so they can combine into the headquarters whenever we're ready. And in reserve, this guy is going to walk off of there. Actually, that, they can go straight onto there, rather. They don't have to be on the beach. Because the, once the first guy walks off, then you're golden. And then for up here, we're going to use that to bring down the other unit into Sarawak. Oh, we still got the two. Um, we want to change that. Yeah. We want the two to be the one that goes over there first. Yep. Okay. Good, 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 good. Uh, next, we're still going to have to move over one, two, three more units over there, if at all possible. So we're going to need a couple more turns before we're ready to go after uh, Singapore, which is a damn shame, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I'm pretty sure our logistics marker has to go in a city, so we can't put our logistics marker here. We have some kind of advantage, except this one. Nope, that is also a rough hex, it looks like. Uh, yeah, so we'll see how that plays out. Meanwhile. They do finally have, do they have a troop convoy? They finally have a troop convoy, and they are going to use it, doggone it. They're going to make a troop convoy. Oh, but the British can't leave India just yet. Crap. So they better use the troop convoy for something else. Oh, but they don't have the detachment over here yet. I should have put that there. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and, and play an audible here and not be dumb. Um... Let's just say that the British knew about what they were doing. Uh, so this turn, they can move two units over to uh, Port Moresby, much to the chagrin of the Japanese, I'm sure. And I think that's it. And then they get another detachment here, which they are definitely going to put out. Uh, although this kind of has to be at Christmas Island. When do they get another option for more British detachments? It looks like the main thing that will let them do that is additional British bases. Um, which, where the heck did I see that? Um, I think it's the opposite of uh, Hong Kong fortifications, right? So we've got 24B, 24A, somewhere around here. There it is. Additional British bases, 23A. So this is where we can get more uh, of those. We'll consider that strongly. 
and this guy down here. Those are the ones I was looking for. So 24A, we definitely want to play because that's the Hong Kong one. But 23, we have to consider Ceylon versus additional British bases. This is probably going to be fine. This one will be a choice. All right. Good to know. So for now, the British are going to put a detachment in probably Darwin. Uh, it's got to be Christmas Island, right? It's got to be Christmas Island. And then because Darwin, technically, they could walk somebody up here and place a detachment there if they really needed to. So next one's going to be Darwin and then maybe Rabul. Uh, right now, though, they could walk across to Rabul. And that's almost certainly what they're going to do. They're going to walk over to Ley and then they're going to walk over to Rabul to guard those hexes against the Japanese attacks in the future. All right. So that's going to be the end of the Commonwealth turn. Uh, at the end, though, they get to do aid to China. So let's see what they roll. A one or a two gives them another Chinese step. Ooh, they did not get it. They really could have used that nationalist step there. But no such luck. Now aid to China. Uh, sorry, that's that's the Soviet. I'm looking at the wrong one. Other Soviet. They don't have to demand the Baltic states, so nothing really is going to happen over here. So um, we skip basically right over the European, and we go straight to the Eastern Chinese and... They did play aid to China. Russia's posture is not war. They don't have any aid markers. So I think that's going to be it for this whole turn. We do have a couple things in the delay box as a result. Um, we're going to have to see what happens. Wait, why did the... I think I missed... There was another British unit that was damaged, right? Ah, there it is. We didn't... We didn't uh, assign it to the Pacific, so it went to the wrong delay box. Hello? How are we going to do that? Okay, let me just send to the naval delay box now. There we go. So we've got a couple of units here and a scratch defense fleet. We're going to roll for all these. Here's the Axis rolls. They don't have the war production marker yet, so these are straight up. Four and five. One, two, three, four, five. So they get that there and they get that there. Just in time for the summer mud, they'll get their air unit back. That's great. Here's the Allies air unit. Six! Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, way over here. One, two, three, four. I think I misplaced these. Oh, no, no, no. It's not, it's not winter. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Got it. Axis luck marker is coming back. Six also. Ho, 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 ho. That's no good. No good for the Axis. Um, the Allied luck marker is coming back much sooner than that, so they will be able to use it. Meanwhile, Naval Warfare Delay Box, this guy who's undamaged gets a 5. So he's coming back here. This guy who is damaged is coming back a number of seasonal turns forward because he's damaged. So 3. 1, 2, 3, all the way up here. And then their Scratch Defense Fleet is a one, so they get it back right away. Very good for them. And in Europe, we have no more delays. So I think that is it. That is the end of autumn. So we're moving into here. The Axis is getting back one of their damaged air units and one of their strong air units. And their CV fleet. That is very lucky. They get that very soon. Meanwhile, the Allies are getting both of their air units back that were destroyed. And on the European map, the Allied luck marker returns to the strategic warfare box. Oops, I forgot to move these guys as well. Force pool. Force pool. And now we're here. All right. Thanks for watching this one. We'll catch you next time on the road to war.